Welcome to the seventh episode of the Indic Past series. Continuing my discussion on Enger Dryas from the previous episodes, I am going to establish in this episode that Martanda, described in the Indic scriptures, was indeed the son of the Enger Dryas of the Mini Ice Age. In the process of doing this, I am also going to establish the purpose of the story of the wives of the son of Samya deserting her husband and placing Chaya in her place. The story that has invited lot of derision from different quarters must be made known to the world in the right way that it was meant to be by the sages. The decipherment of this story brings to the focus many unknown features of anger dryers that were of interest to the research community. The timeline of Pleistocene and Holocene shows that Skanda had lived during anger dryer days when Marthanda the sun was traveling in the sky. And we are also going to establish in this episode the time period of the starting of the Vaivasvata Manmantara establishing the purpose and meaning of some of the terms of interest to the Vedic society. Looking at the climatic records, the last glacial maximum and minimum had lasted between 33,000 and 15,000 years BP. That was the time the earth was shivering with cold with many places under ice sheets. Then came the sun, the sun Vivaswat that is spreading light by which it came to be known as Vivaswam, the sun started spreading light because of which the ice started melting and most of the places were seeming to become normal at which time the sun itself lost its splendor thereby bringing back uh, the ice age once again which was known as the anger dryas that lasted for thousand years. Recapping the events that we have already discussed, the spread of heat by Vivaswan was not sufficient for heating up the Himalayan region in India. As a result, the glacier of the Amarnath peak, the abode of Shiva and Gangotri could not melt. And that was the time Skanda was born, which we deciphered from the date of the first Sangha. The Skanda has lived around 12,190 years ago. And that was the time many volcanoes were exploding in the Southeast Asian region. One among them was the Tharakan, which we identified with the Tharakasura killed by Skanda. So we have two regions, North Indian region and the Southeast Asian region. And we have to decide which was more habitable, habitable for the Indic society at that time. And here I am showing the vegetation map during the last glacial maximum and minimum. This shows the feasibility of the uh, population to thrive. Here I am showing a circle around the region with covers in the Himalayan region also. And this was the region of polar alpine desert which could not have sustained any life form. Here I am showing the region of Saraswati and the Sindhu river. But that region had a tropical semi-desert and tropical extreme desert. So there also water sources and human population were sparse. Now I am showing the interiors of India, particularly South India and parts of North India. And this region was tropical grassland only. So this was possible only with the sparse rainfall, very rainfall. And here is a region of uh, the tropical woodland near the Gangetic region. But Ganga was not flowing then. So according to studies, the habitable zone of the world around the time of uh, Ice Age was in the equatorial band covering Southeast Asia. The arrow mark shows the region of tropical rainforest which is completely absent in India. The research studies have also shown that summer rains had happened during Ice Age only in these regions. 
rainfall means the thriving human population and gradually the sun was increasing in the brightness and that is why it came to be known as viva swarm the period of the birth of this viva swarm can be identified by the time period of the acceleration of the deglaciation in the south that is 13400 bp coming to the decipherment of the story of samya given in vishnu purana and mahabharata vishwakarman was the father of samya some other text say that trashta was the father of samya both trashta and vishwakarman mean the same the celestial architect or carpenters samya born to vishwakarman means she was not a human being here some natural principle is being talked about and samya means direction and consciousness she was married to vavaswa the sun so now we can understand the husband and wife relationship which we already discussed in the case of swaha with agni quoting a verse from valmiki ramayana told by vasishta that the wife is a consciousness or atman of the husband she only guides or directs the husband so samya showing the direction or becoming the consciousness of vivaswan means they both are married so by marriage of samya and vivaswan only this meaning should be derived but in course of time the sun started becoming hot at that time he is known as surya some of the indic texts mention that samya married surya instead of vivaswan and surya means the one who travels in the sky and stimulates the people to do their work because of the heat people come out and then do their work because of the heat more life forms are springing up is what is meant by this so between samya and surya three children were born say the text manu and yama and yami yama and yami were the twins but samya being unable to bear the heat of the sun just fled before fleeing she brought in her companion or maid called chaya in her place to impersonate herself and to be the wife of surya chaya means shadow or shade this is possible only if the sun had lost its shine so this is a type of a case of nuclear winter or uh, that was possible because of the comet hit that brought in anger dryers so the sun rays were stopped from reaching the surface of the earth the smoke and the dust kicked off by the comet hit had stopped the sun rays is what is being made out from this and we have a date for this 12900 years the upper limit which we already discussed so from this time onwards chaya had taken charge is what we understand from this story previously vivaswan came into being and that we corroborated by the information on the acceleration of deglaciation that was a year of 13400 bp so in between 500 years and in this 500 years sun was shining samya was there manu and yama and yami had come into being but after this 500 years the sun had lost its luster and chaya had come into her place and between chaya and this sun were born shanishchara manu and tapati is what the text are saying unanimously let us decipher this part also Samya married Vivaswan and gave birth to Manu says the story so this is about the birth of a new race which could be about a new haplogroup a new genetic material coming into being and this has coincided with the a natural calamity that we already discussed in the past this is about the rainfall sudden heavy rainfall and volcanism happening simultaneously at which time skanda came to be known as vishaka and this vishaka was taken over by vaivasvata manu as a kulanakshatra for ikshvakus so this shows 
this natural calamity had happened around the time of manu or manu was born or came into being after this has happened and this has happened around 13400 bp or just after that because researches show that deglaciation triggers volcanic activity the data supports the hypothesis that deglaciation can rapidly trigger volcanic activity and rapid sea surface temperature fluctuations cause volcanic activity and also sudden heavy rainfall so because of the disturbances in nature many people have died the people called as manu who were born and they were propagating were increasing numbers they just got reduced because of these natural calamities so death comes means that is a birth of yama or yami because the etymology of yama or yami is that they are restrainers they restrain people means they just shrink them bring them back from birth to death so more of death have happened means birth of yama and yami and this is also associated with samya who gave birth to manu manu and yama and yami were the children of samya and vivaswan manu's population got reduced samya had left and chaya has taken over the arrival of chaya signals the arrival of anger dryas and the sun losing its luster the stories say that the chaya started ill treating yama and the ill treatment was such that yama was about to lose his legs his legs were infested with worms so a person losing his legs means he is not able to stand on his own yama is not being able to stand on his own means he has no energy no food his food is dead people since many people have already died the rate of death is very less and he has no food now and he is not able to stand on his own is what is being made out by this this is further established by the next sentence which says his father gave him cocks to eat so human beings are no more available so better start eating the cocks so this so uh, looks like a kind of a very atrocious way of telling but here lies many important events that happened in reality it says it shows that the cock population also started getting reduced maybe due to lack of food available during egg dry days but the father assured that the restoration of the legs will be possible sooner that means once again there will be a bounce back of the human population and cock population while on the topic of cocks we have enough research studies saying that cocks were indigenous to southeast asia and the cock population had undergone a genetic mutation from 12800 years onwards this coincides with our date of enga dryas and this chaya ya maya be all these people so this is a clear corroboration or validation of the story of river swan offering cocks to yama to eat to survive so the cocks also had undergone some genetic mutation is what we come to know from this in addition to this we have already talked about the shura padma episode in which at the death of shura the cock population had survived the death of shura is nothing but the death of a volcano so the natural calamity had happened that had caused many uh, changes in the environment that affected the human beings and the cock population as well the conceptualization of yama and yami as fraternal twins seems to contain an important information about anger dryas which is of interest to or the research community this can be deciphered from the rigvedic verse on yama and yami in which yami approaches her twin brother yama asking him to be her husband however yama rejects that by quoting the code of dharma this verse is a matter of controversy among many people uh, wondering why a rigvedic seer has composed to this kind of a, a sukta and why they should exist at all a yama and yami as fraternal twins but for us who have been deciphering it right from the beginning 
uh, for this Indic past from the Renga Dyer days, we are able to understand the implications. Of particular interest to us is this verse where Amy justifies her desire. She says, even in the womb, God crushed her, that is the creator, the vivifier, shaping all forms, the creator, has made us the concerts. So what is wrong in continuing a relationship after we have grown up? This seems to be a nature, natural selection on human twinning according to some of the researchers. It has been found that where the population rate has come down drastically, there is a genetic disposition towards creating fraternal twins. There are two types of twins, identical twins and fraternal twins. In the case of identical twins, there is no genetic predisposition. That is only one cell, one egg cell is created that is fertilized and after fertilization it undergoes a division and becomes a twins of the same sex. Whereas in the case of fraternal twins, the mother should contain a genetic disposition which stimulates her uh, uh, hormones to create more than one egg by which she gets more than one egg either two eggs or three eggs and uh, that gets fertilized and the fraternal twins that are born they can propagate their race that is the way the natural selection has worked is what this uh, research has said looking around us we find that this habit of mating between the fraternal twins was prevalent in uh, Bali and uh, the justification given by the people in those times was such that the people who were faithful to each other as husband and wife in the birth will be born in the same womb as twins so that they will continue to live together in that birth also and uh, the marriage between them is sanctioned because of the reason that they were together in the womb. This is nothing but what Yami had said in that verse. And interestingly, we had seen that only in the region of Bali, the Vishaka had happened, the Mount Agung had exploded, Pura Besaki has come up, and all these natural calamities could have given rise to a genetic mutation by which twinning had come to place. By this I am saying, whether the first genetic mutation or a predisposition to getting fraternal twins had started during the Enga Dryas days and was that indicated by the story of this twin uh, Yama and Yami because we have another incident of uh, genetic mutation around that time of fused gender in the case of Ila the first child of Vaivasvatamanu the child was born as a girl then it got converted into a man got a child then again got converted into a woman so this kind of fused gender was there for the first time it seems because the story goes that Vaivasvata Manu so perplexed and worried about this sex change of her child had asked the sages to devise some homa so that the children born to him will be of the same sex and that is how was born the idea of Pumsavana. So we can say that these two things happening around the same time twinning and that is yama and yami and a fused gender of ila following the burst of mount agung or vishaka must have been caused by a genetic mutation that came into being at the time of anger dryas from samya's children let us move over to see what happened with the chaya's children Chaya was in existence during Enga Dryas that lasted for thousand years. Both Chaya and Enga Dryas stand for less light. And Chaya's first child was Shaneshchara. Does it mean the Shani Graha or Saturn was discovered for the first time during the beginning part of Enga Dryas? It looks so. The second child was Manu, but this is not Vaivasvata Manu because the father is no longer Vivaswar. But this Manu has Savarna, same type, same type like what? It should be about the surroundings or about Chaya, the anger race. That is the mini ice age. So the Manu who had survived the mini ice age is going to be the lord of the eighth Manvantara, that is Savarni Manu. 
By this it is conveyed that the 8th Manmantra is going to be an ice age and the people of that period will have a diff different genetic uh, uh, disposition or uh, maybe a different haplogroup and who had a different kind of uh, uh, faculties for survival in an ice age at that time. Whereas the present Manmantra is an interglacial Manmantra of Vaivasvata. So thinking about this, uh, the future manmantras can be understood in some way. The ninth manmantra is that of Daksha Savarni. Savarni means a similar type of Daksha here. And we have not yet talked about a Daksha, Daksha Yaga. We will be talking about it in future episode. At that time we will know what, it, what is meant by Daksha Savarni. Then there is Brahma Savarni and Dharma Savarni and Rudra Savarni. In one of the upcoming episodes I will be talking about the concept of Rudra, how it was developed. So, similar to that, some future Manvantara also is going to be. This is what is being conveyed by these things. The ch third child of Chaya is Tapati, the river. Tapa means warmth. Because of the warmth, the Tapati was born. So, looking at the figure of uh, the Indian map, you see Tapi or Tapati river here. It starts from a place called Mool Tapi or Mool Thai which is around 2500 feet high only. By having said that Tapati was born to Chaya, it is made out that this area of Multai or this uh, mountain range was snow covered at the time of Ice Age. And since the heat was traveling from south to north when Vivaswan was born, this Tapati area only must have been receiving more heat than any other place in the north and as a result of the melting of the snow at that place, the river was born and this has continued or this has happened during the anger driest days is what is being made out from this uh, uh, reference here. So this is a new information for us that which at the height of 2500 feet on the Satpura range, it was snow covered during the time of Ice Age. So, recapping the events after the end of Ice Age, Vivaswan was born, but he was replaced by Martanda after that. Who was this Martanda? Brahmanda Purana gives us the clues. They, the sages have inquired, why was Vivaswan called Martanda by the scholars? So this clarifies that Vivaswan and Martanda were one and the same. When the sun was spreading light, it was Vivaswan. Now when it has lost its luster, it was known as Martanda. And they are the same. And Sutta had replied, even for a long time after it had been produced, the egg remained unbroken. That is, the sun did not fade away. The sun remained even though it was dull. Indeed, he is not dead. So, he does na brutha, though he is within the under. B. Martanda, even as he was within this egg. So, the sun is considered Martanda by those conversant with the Puranas, says the Rishi. So, this gives us a clarity that when the sun remained obscure and he was expected to start shining at any time, he was known as Marthanda. So the Marthanda is not a dead. It is almost dead anyway. But it is going to come up, spring up to life is what is being made out here. The most important revelation from this is that if the basic nature changes, the name changes. As long as it was spreading light, it was Vivaswan. When it lost the light, it was Marthanda. It was like almost dead, so Marthanda. Once again it started spreading light, so Marthanda became Vivaswan. This is applicable, you know where? In Arundhati episode that people have been believing that Arundhati had crossed the way of her husband Vasishta. Arundhati by etymology means the one who never crosses the way. Uh, Rundati. Rundati means who crosses. Arundhati means who never crosses. 
So Arundhati had always remained Arundhati only throughout the Indic past. Suppose she has crossed the path of her husband, she would have been named as Arundhati, like how Vivaswan was named as Martanda for some time. Once after she has um, regained her original position, she would have been named as Arundhati again. That kind of change did not happen. So our ancestors rishis were very clear about what they have taught. It is up to us to understand the basics of these things while we are reconstructing our past. Martanda's mother is recognized as Aditi by the Rigvedic Sukta. It says that there are eight sons for Aditi. Eight are the sons of Aditi who from her body sprang to life. With seven she went to meet the gods. She cast Martanda away. So with her seven sons Aditi went forth to meet the earlier age. She brought Martanda thitherward to spring to life and die again. This shows that the ancestral society of uh, the Indic people had recognized seven sons, the seventh being Vivaswa, who became Martanda, and once again when Vivaswan regained his splendor, Martanda was cast away, that is he has died. By seven sons it is being revealed that the society has recognized the differences in the nature of the sun during different eras. Based on the differences, they have classified the sons to be seven. The eighth one being Martanda and that coinciding with the, the Enga Dryas, we can say Martanda was the son of the Enga Dryas. Looking at the map, when Vivaswan had gone, in its place Martanda was running. Once Vivaswan started getting the splendor, Martanda was gone and Vivaswan once again started spreading light and started chasing Samya, his wife. The wife shows the direction. That is why the sun is uh, heating the land more towards the north. And this has a definite date of beginning according to science which was 11,500 BP. It was at 11,500 BP the anger dryers came to an end. And the, the present sun started shining very well. So this can be said to be the beginning of the Vaivasvataman Mantra. So any date of Vaivasvatamanu's descendants, the Ikshvaku, Ram, Ramayana or whatever, should come after this date only and not before. Looking at the time scale, Skanda had lived during Engadryas that we have proved again and again. And now we know that Martanda was a son of Engadryas. And Skanda was part of Chakshushaman Mantra. That means the period before Engadryas was Chakshushaman Mantra, the sixth Man Mantra. Chakshusha means seeing, capability to see. So that Man Mantra was full of events which we will be discussing later. Dhruva was there in that Man Mantra. Even the concept of Vishnu, Prahalada, everything developed during that Man Mantra only. And after Engadrayas started the Vaivasvata Man Mantra. And all these have definite dates that we have found out now. Skanda had a definite date and that was the date of the Homa era we can say. He started the Homa perhaps around 12,190 BP. This date is as per the first Tamil Sangam. But around that time he had started and we will be discussing more about the Skanda's life from the Tamil scriptures in the future episodes. And after this period comes the birth of Vavaswam which happened around 11,500 BP according to scientists. So any date of Vaivaswata Manu's descendants say Ikshvaku, Rama and others can happen only after this date and not before that. Interesting uh, information here about Martanda is that he is regarded as the son of Adhikamasa. And Adhikamasa is a concept of the five year yuga. 
This means the Adhikamasa concept and the five year yuga must have come into being only after Engadryas. That is after 11,500 BP and not before that. Let me repeat. The concept of the five year yuga must have come into place only after the recognition of Martanda. That is after 11,500 BP. This brings in the need to know about the Yuga as was given by our ancestral rishis, the five year Yuga and the Chatur Maha Yuga. Now we know for clear that the five year Yuga was started only after 11,500 BP. Then what about the Chatur Maha Yuga? There is absolutely no mention about it in the previous periods. So there was a time, a definite time when that was conceived and recorded. So we have to discuss all that. That we will be doing in the 8th episode. Please stay with us and keep spreading the information of this video to others. Keep sharing with others. Thank you.